everyone! Now, today's video is special because uh, we're, we're revealing Mike's brilliant idea, but, but first, but first, but first, but first. Wait, seriously? We need, we need to do the, 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 the dining on a dime cookbook where you can eat better and spend less. For... Hey, read the ISBN. What's the, what's the price? <laughs> the, 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 for only, uh, for only $34.99. For only $34.99. <laughs> 25% off right now. 5%. Hello, today we are revealing Mike's brilliant idea for my kitchen remodel. Yes, it has been five months in the making and we are finally there. We started January 9th and this is June. So it has been a long haul, but we are almost finished. We did get finished with Mike's brilliant idea. And let me tell you what it is. Okay, so as you can see in these pictures, we decided to totally remodel our whole kitchen. We had this area in our living room that was a really awkward hallway. There was a, a larger closet and a smaller closet, and you kind of, you walked down the hallway in a zigzag. So there was a closet on the right, you walked down, there was a closet straight ahead, and then you turned, and then you went into our bedroom. Our kitchen was arranged so that I had to store my food in the laundry room. The former owners had put a really nice big rollout cabinet in there, but it was awkward going into the laundry room to get our food. So as we were looking at our kitchen remodel, we realized even though this was a really nice long countertop right here on the side, it was the longest portion of countertop that I had in the kitchen. The majority of the countertop that I had was in 12 to 15 inch sections broken up really bad. So I really didn't have a space except for this section here to roll out cinnamon rolls, that type of thing. But this wall was right next to that awkward hallway. I bet you guys are guessing. So even though I had some cabinets here and a nice long countertop, it really wasn't that functional for me. So Mike said, what if we take out these closets, take out the hallway and make the hallway into a pantry? I have always wanted a walk-in pantry. I was like, uh, sure. I didn't know if it would actually be something we could do, but after looking at it and talking to some friends because we had heating ducts and air conditioning ducts that we had to deal with and things like that, we realized we could turn it into a pantry. So I started looking at ideas. I saw this one in a magazine. I absolutely loved the green and the barn doors, but I realized I really probably wouldn't have room for a barn door, but I liked the look of this one where it was an old fashioned country store type look. And then I liked this one with the brown countertops and all of the canned goods. I really liked the setup of this, especially with the wood crates on the floor. I really liked that old fashioned look. And then I liked this one with the door because I thought, well, you don't wanna always be looking at all your food and everything. So I like the door. And then I like this one with the glass door because I thought, well, that looks old and country store-ish. So I started dreaming. They got in, started tearing down the walls. First of all, when we got the quote, this was not in the quote for the kitchen remodel. And I told them, I don't know, about a month or so before they were supposed to come that I had decided to add a pantry. Did you want to come look at it? And they said, no, just surprise us when we get there. I think they had a little bit more of a surprise than they were anticipating. <laughs> but our contractors were absolutely wonderful. They went with the flow. No matter what crazy idea I came up with, they were always willing to just go with it and work with me. I was just super excited that I didn't have to sit there and argue with them to get what I wanted. So we started construction. They started tearing down the walls and really getting in there and making it real. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna really be a nice uh, <coughs> nice pantry if you. So I can't change my mind now. You can, but it'll be. Do you ever have more. people do that? That change their mind and put it back? Have you ever had that? Uh, not completely 
just like it was, uh -huh. but Pretty almost, oh, almost, wow. yeah. And uh, yeah, but sometimes you just don't know until you see it. I know. They weren't really necessary closets, but it was nice having the extra closets. I think Jack's friends were totally shocked when we moved into this house, and one of his friends went through, and I think he counted 13 closets in our house. So <laughs> we have a lot of closets in, in this house. So I hated to lose some, but they were working on getting them torn out. And then we ran into our first major problem. The heating vent could not be moved we thought so we worked and worked and worked figure out a way finally we figured out they were able to move it to the other side of the what would be now the pantry wall got it in there and was able to get it moved we also had a problem there was an air conditioning duct or intake right here so that it was in the hallway originally but when we moved it it would be in the pantry so that if I put pantry doors on, there would be no way to get intake of air. So then we had to add extra vents and all of this. It was a big hoo-ha. <laughs> so that really took a lot to get figured out. In the end, we left this air conditioning vent where it was, but we discovered after everything was all done and put together that it opens the wrong way. This is the vent for the air conditioner but now <laughs> we need to go change the filter um if i put anything on the top shelf we can't use it so we're gonna see if maybe we can turn it around or something like that i don't know sometimes the best laid plans aren't still the best laid plans <laughs> So now in the end, we're gonna have to go in and figure out some way to turn this vent cover around. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Honestly, we haven't got that far. Any HVAC guys, let me know how we can do this. Um, there's gotta be something we can do for it, but it's just one of those things at the end of the remodel, we're like, we'll just deal with it later. So in the meantime, I was shopping and shopping at the ReStore here in our town, our Habitat for Humanity Restore is absolutely fabulous here. I will tell you there are some restores that are not great. I've had lived in some cities where they're not that great, but the one in Colorado and the one here in Sheridan, Wyoming is absolutely wonderful. Brad, love Brad, my favorite restore guy. He was always helping me keep an eye out. I let him know what I was looking for. He was really good about helping me get the stuff and helping keep an eye out. I got these shelves for the pantry for $2 each. So I was super excited with that find. Then I really wanted drawers in my pantry. Drawers are so much more convenient for me. I knew that I had the majority of shelving in the pantries, but I wanted some drawers. Well, I found this dresser it was $100 with that and the hutch that was on the on the top of it. It was $100 for that. I didn't want to pay $100 for a dresser that I was going to have to do quite a bit of work to. And so finally, I kept waiting, kept going back and waiting. And they kept dropping the price down, dropping the price down. And finally, I got it down to $50. And I had a $25 coupon for buying so much stuff at the ReStore for the remodel. So I got this dresser for $25 absolutely love it it's the coolest thing ever it had this newspaper print liner in there i always you guys remember those tables at wendy's for the few times we got to eat at wendy's i absolutely love the newspaper print on the table i just thought that was the coolest thing ever so i got that spray painted i had them spray painted as they were painting my kitchen cabinets i had them spray that for me then they got the walls up you can see here it's totally transformed I originally wanted a really old fashioned door, but it was gonna cost way too much to retrofit that into the door jam. So we ended up using one of the closet doors. I didn't like that. I mean, it would have fit, but it was just way too big. And so then I found these doors for $45, got the special double swing hinges, so it went both ways. Those things were super expensive. I had to get six of them and they were $17 each, but I really wanted the doors to swing both directions. So we hung the doors up, got them on there, used them while we were finishing the pantry a little bit. And I wasn't real sure I wanted to keep the doors on there, to be honest. So 
I thought about that for a while. They, while they were putting up the beadboard, we got lots of nice beadboard in here. They were able to frame out my little window on the top. I was so super excited about that. I really wanted a little window. I think those things are just so stinking cool. So what I did was I decided to make my own window. I went to the glass shop, spent $9 to get a piece of glass that would fit in there. And then I decided to make my own stained glass. Now, let me tell you, I thought this was gonna be way easier than I thought. First of all, I had to find a pattern. Well, then I realized, how am I gonna take a pattern and transfer it? I just, I couldn't quite figure out how to do that. Well, then I thought, Tara, hello, I have stained glass in my entryway. So what I did was, I hung up the glass with painter's tape in my entryway. I hand drew with a marker the pattern onto my glass. Then I went to Dollar Tree and I got some frosted glass peel and stick for $1.25, put that on the glass, and then I took the puffy paint, the black puffy paint, and outlined it. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Come to find out it wasn't so brilliant. So, <laughs> I just, my hands were not steady enough to make a straight, nice line. So then I tried peeling it up. That didn't work. And so <laughs> that was a total disaster. So what I did was I ended up scraping it all off. Starting again, I tried a different kind of just regular non-puffy paint. That didn't work either. So then I scrapped all of it. I ordered pinstriping off of Amazon, put the pinstriping on, and then I took glitter paint from Walmart for, it was like $1.28 or something, and I painted glitter paint on the, the glass to make a fake stained glass window, and that finally worked. So even though that was a big headache, trying to get that thing figured out. I saved myself probably a couple of hundred bucks at least having a real stained glass made, but I am super happy with the way that turned out. Then as I was looking at this inspiration picture for the pantry, I realized I'm gonna have to figure out how much space my food needed to be spaced. So I measured out where I wanted the shelves. Now, they were gonna originally do shelves where I could move up and down but I really, really wanted floating shelves. I didn't want any brackets in the middle. I didn't want any poles, nothing. But in the end, I ended up having to use shelf brackets. I found these white ones at Home Depot. So what I ended up doing for the shelving was <laughs> I bought new boards because I realized after I had already bought my inexpensive ones at restore that by the time I have to paint the new boards, it was going to cost me more in paint and time and labor to paint those boards than to just get new boards that are already white and put them in there. By this time in the project, we're into three and a half, four months, somewhere around there. And we were needing to start getting this done. And we were spending a lot of money. We were super way over budget. And so now we need to start getting some things done with the least amount of labor as possible. So I ended up buying new shelves and reusing some shelves that I had here in the house. These were um, in a closet that I had. So I pulled these shelves out. They used to be shoe racks. And then I was going to use this other shelf for all of my canned goods. And it's just a art storage cubby. The contractor spent like an hour and a half, two hours trying to get all these shelves out. They got them out. Oh my goodness. This shelf was so stinking heavy. It wasn't even funny. There was absolutely no way this shelf was going to be able to be hung on the wall and not fall down by the time I added canned goods. Then I also was still going to the restore at this point. I found this bin for $12, I really liked the wire look and wanted to use it in the pantry, but 
it ended up not working. I also found this other little table for $2 that I thought for sure was gonna work. It just was not big enough. I needed something bigger for storing my appliances in there. So then you can see here, I ended up finishing painting the rest of the pantry. We were just so over budget. This was something that I could do. Mike and I installed the brackets and then we painted and I caulked and got those in. Then we did have a little bit of a mistake on the shelving. <laughs> now, I'll warn you, at this point of the stage of the game, we were like triple over budget, triple over time, and I was just flat out worn out and ready to be done with this. Well, one of their helpers um, was installing the shelves and put the screws through the top instead of the bottom. Now, you might say, Tara, that's not a big deal. Well, here's the thing. This pantry is possibly gonna be used for my cooking videos, so it has to look as pristine as possible. I will tell you, I about lost it <laughs> when I saw that. But to be perfectly honest, I was so numb at this point, I couldn't cry, I couldn't do anything. I was just like, okay. Now, after I calmed down, this really isn't the worst thing that could happen. All we would really have to do is just go buy new boards and reinstall them. But at this stage of the game, I really didn't want to be paying to have to do all of that. So what happened was I ended up going in and sinking the screws, filling them with wood filler, and then painting little dots of paint over the top of them. And in the end, it really wouldn't have mattered anyway because I ended up lining the shelves as it was. So I didn't need to do all that but I didn't know that I was gonna be lining the shelves at the time. But there are little things like that that do get tiresome when you are doing a remodel. So just if you're planning on doing something like this, just be prepared. And it was just an honest mistake. So I knew we needed to just, you know, move on, fix it, move on and just get the project finished. So then we had several little issues. I got the dresser in there and then I had this big hole where I wanted to put my appliances. And so I found this coffee table at the restore for 15 bucks and I thought for sure it was gonna work. I mean, I tried like five or six different things, changed my mind like 20 times what to do with this corner. So got the coffee table in there, got everything installed and realized it wasn't tall enough to put my taller appliances in there. So after all that, then we had to pull out the coffee table. I changed my mind on this in here. We already installed this counter and now we can't get this out. So before you start cursing, I'm not cursing. Just have patience. I'm talking to our viewers. Oh, okay. Realize that you are going to make stupid mistakes like this and you guys have no idea what it took for us to get this installed. This countertop here was an absolute nightmare to get I mean we probably spent 45 minutes just getting this installed so keep your patience and realize that um, maybe the table's not that bad there after all exactly <laughs> <laughs> then we got the we got that shelf figured out we put a shelf in that corner and I ended up touching up the paint on the dresser with some yellow to pull the yellow from the kitchen into the pantry just a little bit. So I hand painted these little wheat stalks on the dresser, thought it turned out really nice. Then for the floor, I wanted something old fashioned retro. So I was looking at all these patterns, trying to figure out which one I wanted to use for, for the floor. I ended up going with just white and I really, really didn't want to use white. I, it just gets too dirty and it just scuffs and all that. But I found these white tile. I couldn't even find white linoleum to lay down. I couldn't find anything. So finally at Menards, I found these white tile linoleum peel and stick and I put those down. There's only about 15 square feet of exposed floor in the pantry and the entryway. So I think I'm gonna be good with that. All the scuffs from the remodel and everything came up really easy with a magic eraser. And then the contractors had to move all their stuff into the pantry and something purple leaked out of one of their bags and ruined the tile literally right in front. The first tile you see in the pantry. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? 
and whatever it was, it seeped clear through to the subfloor. Thankfully, I had more tiles than I needed. I made sure I kept extra. I was, it took me about 45 minutes to get it peeled up. I got it peeled up, got it exchanged. So that crisis was averted, but just be super careful when you guys are doing a remodel. We finally found out that it was plumbing, uh, goo of some sort. I don't know. They put it on the, on the threads of plumbing for something. And so, or glue, I don't know. And so, so yes, I got that fixed, but just be careful when you're remodeling to watch for stuff like that. Cause it does happen. Then in the end, I decided I didn't want the doors on the pantry. I had gone back and forth and I had the doors sitting in my living room for about six weeks, looking at them, studying and, and I was going to cut out the centers of the doors and put in screen to make an old fashioned screen door. At this point, they had thrown away the hinge packages. I wasn't sure that even for the $200 or so the doors ended up costing me in the end, that it was worth putting them on. So we're just gonna keep them for now. And I might later, if I want doors on there, go ahead and cut out the panels and put screen in there so it looks like an old fashioned screen door and rehang those then maybe in six months or a year if I decide to want doors. But then I had the problem where the door jam was really messed up. So I went in and I sanded everything down and put everything in there, put wood putty in to fill the holes. And I put the wrong wood putty in and it was the kind that's not stainable. So that was a huge mistake. So I had to go in and re-sand it all down, chisel out all the putty, put new putty in and it's still, it's stained, but not quite as well. I mean, it, it, it it's okay. But in the end, I thought, well, it just looks like it's an old fashioned. It's been worn and used for a long time. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that look with no doors because the way the pantry turned out in the very end, I am so super excited about. Before we go on, if you guys would like a free copy of our Dining on a Dime cookbook ebook, go to the description below and use the coupon code DINING1, D-I-N-G, and the number one, and it will be yours for free. So here are the end pictures, guys, of the pantry reveal before it's decorated. We ended up using the squiggly brackets, which I really like. And in the end, I think I'm really glad that I used them because they add a whole lot more character. I did have to have a couple of poles put in to hold up the canned goods shelves because I knew that the weight of the canned goods would not hold if we didn't do that but I'm okay with it. It turned out really nice. Of course, my window is perfect. I absolutely love my window. I'm super happy how it turned out. My dresser is working perfectly in here. I love all the drawers. The drawers are the perfect size to hold enough stuff, but not too much so that they're heavy when you pull them in and out. And then my shelf that I changed my mind like 20 times on and, and had Mike redo like five times finally just put a shelf in there and I'm going to put a curtain up and I think that's going to hide all of my appliances really well. Watch next in about a week or 10 days. I'm going to have of how I decorated my pantry. Here's a little sneak peek. I will just say my friend said, who has a pantry like this? <laughs> so she really liked it and I love it. I have not seen any pantries like this, so I am super excited to show you guys the reveal. Please visit us at livingonadime.com.